Good evening and welcome to the news from Shuruq TV. Today's stories include Sudan establishes national mechanism for coordination with UNITAMS. Observers hold separate talks with Egypt, Ethiopia, Sudan over Renaissance Dam filling. Empowerment Committee terminates service of a number of employees. Sudan has established a national mechanism for coordination with the United Nations Integrated Transition Assistance Mission in Sudan, UNITAMS, which will begin its activities on January 1, 2021. The Prime Minister issued a decision to form the national mechanism for coordination with the UNITAMS and appoint Ambassador Omar al-Sheikh as the national coordinator, reads a statement issued by Hamdok's office on Sunday. Hamdok's decision provides that the new mechanism will include 14 other members besides Ambassador al-Sheikh. All of them are civilians except the representative of the military intelligence. The main task of the committee is to coordinate between the government and the UNITAMS at the federal and state levels and identifying Sudan's support needs. The observers of the African Union, European and the United States on Sunday held separate meetings with Egyptian, Ethiopian and Sudanese negotiating delegations over the filling of Renaissance Dam known also as the GERD. During the past month, the observers accompanied the direct talks to resolve the dispute of filling of the $4.8 billion dam. Now, in a process initiated by the chairperson of the African Union and South African President, Cyril Ramaphosa, they are moving to mediate the talks and put some concrete propositions on the negotiating table. During Sunday meetings, the three countries explained their positions and how they consider responding to the concerns of the two others. The Empowerment Removal Committee issued a decision terminating service of a number of workers in accordance with the law to dismantle the system of June the 30th. Dr. Salah Manna, a member of the committee, read the decision during a press conference of the committee in the Republican Palace this evening. The decision included 47 employees of the Sovereign Council and 14 directors of administration in the National Student Welfare Fund. The Deputy Chairman of the Empowerment Removal Committee, Mohammed al faqih Suleiman, has affirmed that the government and the committee started to meet the demands of the June the 30th processions. al faqih indicating in the press conference held Sunday evening, the memorandum presented by the families of the martyrs and the resistance committees included a number of demands, top of which the dismantling of the defunct regime. Prime Minister Dr. Abdullah Hamdok relieved the Director General of the Police Forces, Lieutenant General Abdullah Al Bashir, and his deputy, Lieutenant General Osman Mohammed Yunus. The dismissal of the police leaders comes in the response to the protests that took place on June the 30th as millions took to the streets in the capital Khartoum and many other cities to press the government to reform the state institutions, particularly the security services. A statement issued by the Council of Ministers on Sunday that the Prime Minister issued a decision to dismiss the police, Lieutenant General Adil Mohammed Ahmed Bashair, from the post of Director General of the Police Forces and to appoint Lieutenant General Izzeddin Sheikh Ali to replace him. In in a separate decision, Hamdok dismissed Lieutenant General Yunus from his position as the Deputy Director General of the Police Forces. The Cabinet Affairs Minister Ambassador Amir Maniz has renewed Sudan's keenness to strengthen joint cooperation with Saudi Arabia in different fields for the interest of the people of the two countries. This came when the Minister received on Monday at his office the Saudi Ambassador to Khartoum Ali bin Hassan Jafar. The meeting touched on the cooperation relations between the two countries and means for developing them further, especially in economic fields. The ongoing preparations for holding the joint Saudi-Sudanese committee in Khartoum were also discussed. Deputy Commander-in-Chief of the Rapid Intervention Forces, RAF, the member of the federal delegation currently on a visit to Nertiti, has announced the allocation of 100 vehicles to contribute to maintaining security, collection of unlicensed firearms, and securing the agricultural season West Jebel Marra locality in central Darfur state. Degalu, addressing a meeting with the native administration in Nertiti, vowed to track the perpetrators and infiltrators, arrest them and bring them to trial. He renewed the RIF's keenness to protect and secure December Revolution to achieve its goals, presented in realization of the democratic transition. Reminding headlines. 
Sudan establishes national mechanism for coordination with UNITAMS. Observers hold separate talks with Egypt, Ethiopia, Sudan over GERD filling. Empowerment Committee terminates service of a number of employees. Well, that was everything from Shuruq TV. Thank you for following and see you tomorrow.